The media had an opportunity to watch practice number nine of Notre Dame's spring football 2024. We anxiously await practice number 11 because we think we're going to see quite a bit in a scrimmage this weekend. But today was a five viewing segment. And Tim Priester, you had an overview of the situation, got to speak with Gino Gadulli and Max Bola afterwards. I thought today was actually a, a pretty revealing interviews from those two coaches. They, they really drilled down on on some specific some specificity in those rooms it's like a it's a five player linebacker room in terms of competing for starting spots and of course the four quarterbacks we've talked about all spring yeah. have shined yeah we had an opportunity we didn't expect to speak with riley leonard but we had that as well but your, your point about gino guduli i thought he was really interesting and one of the points that he made was you know in, in in when you have four quarterbacks obviously there's a competition everybody wants to be a starter but what he tries to emphasize to them is it's not you versus that quarterback it's you versus you because you can't control what the other quarterbacks do when they're on the field but you can control obviously what you do and so I think that's the right frame of mind I, I spent some time with with uh, Steve Angeli as well and you know just talked about how his confidence grew last year and Gino Guaduli uh, kind of reiterated that he said about midway through camp because he said last spring at this time he couldn't he he'd get lost within the play and within the the alternatives within a play look to one side of the field and then it's not there and he wasn't sure to do from that what to do from that point but he started picking up in the fall and and i and i also brought up to him about you know stressing to him um you know about sticking around and not leaving right. after the spring and those kind of things and of course the injury to, to riley leonard changes that but he quickly said Steve understands how important he is to the program. So hopefully that keeps the room intact. But I thought there was some good stuff from Gino Guadula. Yeah, and there's a good question asked by a colleague who said, you could ask this of all four quarterbacks, but what makes Kenny Minchie different from the other ones? What does Kenny Minchie do well? And I thought Guadula's answer was great. He's like, well, there's not a pass he doesn't think he can make. It doesn't matter how tight that window is. You love to see it, but you also have to coach it a little bit because – He's a gunslinger, and Jaden Greathouse, a previous interview, said Kenny Minchie's a gunslinger. I think Minchie's had a really good camp to the point where, I mean, Steve Angeli's going to be ahead of Kenny Minchie because of what he's accomplished of late, but now you can look at Kenny Minchie as a player that can help you, not just a guy you're bringing along. Yeah, and, and Gino Guadulli talked about, like when we talked about what does Minchie need to do, he talked about leadership. I don't think that he's a normally uh, real outspoken guy. He's a laid-back guy. guy. He's yeah, very, very, back. very much yeah. so, uh, you know, not a, not a big booming voice on the field where other guys can can certainly be that way i'm not sure if any of the quarterbacks are like that uh but yeah you know i mean that so that's that's an area where he needs to continue to work and it just goes back to again we're not saying Notre Dame has four starting quarterbacks but i, I mean i don't remember a spring I, I forget springs pretty easily but i don't remember a spring in which you have four quarterbacks right. on the field and every time you go out there you think you know not necessarily starter or he's going to be great but they're all competent college quarterbacks at least at, at the varying stages of their careers. We talked to Riley Leonard quite a bit, as you mentioned, and, and Gadouli did mention that the differentiator for Leonard is he's just he's by far the best athlete of the group, and but we knew that going in. So I asked Riley Leonard, because he wasn't sugarcoating anything. He said if it was not the spring game, he would be 50-50 to play. Now, he's not going to play in the spring game. We know that. That, that question didn't need to be asked, but he's not going to play in the spring game. 50-50 to play, it's probably glass half full or glass all the way full by Riley, but that does mean he can be he can be back full go when everybody reconvenes here in June. He would, you would see me, they expect him to be ready to go in June. Yeah. And he feels great. You know I mean? I, and that's why when we saw him last week crossing the, the street to get into uh, IAC and he's like, wow, he's got a little bit of a bouncing step with that boot. And then we've seen him throw a little bit and they're, they're really, they, they don't have any concern mm -hmm. about him re-injuring this. It's a different injury from the one that he, he actually had during the fall that the, what happens is the plate has caused a stress fracture in his fibula, and that's what they had to, to fix. But no, he's felt great. All the uh, x-rays look good. And so when we talk about him having a little bit of bounce, so to speak, in a, in a boot, he feels good. And the, and the medical staff uh, feels good about where he is. Talked to Max Bull as well. He didn't delineate the linebacker battles, but he did say five, six guys kind of fighting for spots. And he said he's not married to the fact that a guy is going to will win the will, the Mike, the Rover, and he's going to stick with them. He said last year that was obvious. Those guys had it won before they got in. They won easily. If, if you're recompeting, they won easily in the spring and even more so in August. It was young guys behind him. He likes the versatility of the group, and Jaden Osbury is a guy that is really showing that versatility. I didn't see him with some of the linebackers today. We were briefly in there for five periods. I looked down through binoculars, and he was over with nickels and safeties. And Osbury mentioned he is doing some work at Rover, and part of that is learning to cover like a nickel. Yeah. I, I spent some time with Jalen Sneed 
I didn't get over to the comments by Max Bola, which will be transcribed, right. and I will apply that to the feature story. But can you tell me now what he said about Jalen Sneed? Yeah, he said, first of all, he was asked, when did things change for Jalen Sneed? He said the first practice of this spring. He was a completely different player. And that means focus. And he continued to talk about focus. He said now he's focused. So now when he can run and cover a back in the backfield, he focuses on that task and does it. It's it is 100% mental for Jalen Sneed. It's bringing it every day. And I asked him, you know, you you have him at will when we're out there. Obviously, he plays some strong side rover in the base. And he said, "Yeah, that's the thing. He is a versatile guy." He's not a nickel at Rover, but when they play a 4-3 base, they can ask him to play Rover, and he can attack the line of scrimmage, he can attack the flats, and he did mention we also have him still in that third down pass rushing role. So you're going to see Snead in multiple places. You'll see Osbury in multiple places. I did notice Drake Bowen very briefly, and this is just a quick takeaway from practice, the starting middle linebacker, he was flanked by Snead and Kaiser. Bowen did do a few reps at will with uh, Vialamu uh, Kingston Villamuasa playing Mike linebacker. So mm -hmm. those are the five guys, I think. I didn't see Zinter rotate in as much, but again, five segments. I, we shouldn't be saying about Preston Zinter from watching five segments. I just think that there's five guys that can rotate there, and if you had to go play now, they'd be able to do so. Yeah. I just want to mention the offensive line, the, the little bit of time that we had uh, to, to see them, the, the five period starting offensive line, just the way it's been Jack, from left to right, Jagas of Coogan, Craig Shrouth, and Baker. Second team, I, I noticed Rocco Spindler at left guard, and I, I'm just speculating here, but I would imagine that the more they see Billy Shrouth on the field with the first unit, the less of it there's an opportunity to beat him out. So not that I think Pat Coogan's going to be beaten out, but right. I but I think that switch, maybe that's just a, a better fit. I don't know exactly, but uh, we do know that Sam Pendleton is entrenched now as the number two center. Uh, I, you know, he would be whether it would be him or Spindler, his first guy off the bench on the interior offensive right. line, I think that's a bit of a toss-up. But the second line from left to right was Absher, Spindler, Pendleton, Tarek, and Wagner. And then just for clarity's sake, third team left to right, Prescott, Peter Jones, uh, Joe Odding, Ty Chan, and Anthony Knapp at that right tackle spot. I like Knapp. I like yeah. what we see of him. He's put together really well. There's one additional injury to talk about. There's been the same guys in the pit basically all of spring ball, but Jaden Harrison was not practicing today. Uh, he was on the sideline pit, and you mentioned you saw him in a boot mm -hmm. as well. So that, that would be the notable injury update from today's practice. Other guys have just been out for the entire spring. We didn't get to see much really got to see no one-on-one -on -one action in, in, in today's setting, but was there anything from being down the offensive side of the ball. You mentioned Jaden Greathouse. I know you wanted to get a note in about him, how he approaches practice versus anyone else. I, I, I just love the way Jaden Greathouse attacks every rep. And, I, you know, as a, as a former high school coach, you know, like you got a line of guys. Let's say you got six guys, and so you're going to have a rep every six snaps of the football. Why can't you be ready to go as hard as you possibly can when it's your snap? That's what Jaden Greathouse does. I'm not saying the other receivers don't, right. but just not to the extent that Jaden Greathouse does, and I just think it's really impressive. Uh, Jordan Faison was out there during flex. Uh, he, he didn't do anything. I don't know when Kedron Young got back into, uh, into play. He had a lower body injury, but he was back out there. You mentioned Jaden Harrison. Uh, I, I continue to be impressed by Cooper Flanagan. He's a big body. We had an opportunity to talk to uh, Mitchell Evans on Saturday, and he – Evans feels the responsibility to really bring Flanagan along mm -hmm. because they're short of bodies and he's got all, he's, he has a lot of responsibility. So Evans is trying to to keep him uh, you know up to speed. And Eli Raritan, we keep talking about what we don't see him do. He was running uh, against air, of course. I doubt that he's doing anything against you know live competition DBs, but he was running routes against air. And Evans said it Saturday I, when you see him running and in the open field. He's a very impressive guy. He looks like a looks like a wide receiver in a in a tight end's body. I want to point this out because it was a Tuesday five segment viewing. Did not see Josh Burnham out there, but we have not been to a Tuesday Thursday practice schedule yet. He could easily have class on Tuesdays. Riley Mills and Howard Cross were not there as well. We will see all of Notre Dame, I assume, this weekend. We're going to have a chance to see a, a large scrimmage, probably one of the better viewing periods we've ever had. Not, it's, it's not a viewing period; it's a scrimmage practice, and I like to kind of explain on our message board at times. We don't see full scrimmages usually. We see a practice with some scrimmage segments involved. So this will be illuminating. This will, <laughs> as we go into our countdown through the summer, yeah. 90 on down, this will, f I mean, just because of the very nature of it, we don't get to see much of practices. It will formulate a lot of the ideas that we have, 1 through 90 or 90 through 1 as we count them down. 
uh, on the 2024 football team. Before that, we have a podcast on Thursday. Until then, I'm Tim O'Malley. This is Tim Priester, and we are Irish Illustrated.